So I'm going to, I don't know how I'm going to intro this, but uh, well, we've got Will Burford right here, one of my best mates. Um, you've got, I think you've got plenty to talk about with West Brom. I think certainly after your, uh, your last video with Bristol City, um, you were you were not pleased, mate. No, no, I wasn't. Uh, it's just uh, same old, same old at the moment, really. Um, I haven't actually seen us win a game all season uh, with my own eyes. Just dire performances, Not don't offer much. Uh, we're in the game, but we never really look like scoring. And it, it, it's really sad to see us not really competing up, up the top of the championship where I believe we belong. It's weird though, mate, because like we'll go, we'll take back to last season and when when Steve Bruce came in, and look, we know what Bruce's track record is in in the championship. It's it's very very good. You know, he took Birmingham up. He's he took Villa to the player final. You know, he's he's taken Hull to the Premier League. But what what did just what did just didn't click for him? Why why did it not work out for him? Uh, I I think especially towards the end, the players just weren't really playing for him. Um. You know, I, I think Steve Bruce Ball is a bit outdated at the moment. Uh, you know, you look at a few of his recent jobs, Villa, Newcastle, Albion. Ask any uh, any fan from any three of the, that, those three fan bases and they weren't best pleased with uh, the job he was doing. Yeah, I just think it's a bit outdated. Uh, he wasn't getting along too well with the players, but I do think he, oh, Albion currently do have a very overrated squad of players and... You know, I think a lot of people think they should be up there towards the top of the league. But realistically, you think, uh, look at the team sheet and we just haven't got the squad of players there. What's, do you think there's a bit of a hangover really from, because I, 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 you know, you, you can chime in if you want, but I just think it's, there's a bit of a hangover from coming down from the Premier League where there's still a lot of players that, would, that are still there from the Premier League era. And now, you know, you're fighting amongst teams that are, like say, you know, you've still got your parachute payments and like say, you're still competing with the likes of Sheffield United, there's Burnley, there's, um, you look at Luton, they've had, they've had a great, you know, great, they had a great season last season. They, you know, they're having a great season again, just to name a few really. But you're right. I think that the so with, with a call like West Brom right now and competing how poorly they have been, I'm surprised. I'm surprised when they go with an experience like Steve Bruce and like you said, your Brucey ball, my goodness, maybe I'm boring some of the football we've seen. But for you, was was Bruce the wrong appointment? I mean, it's easy to say that now, isn't it? But was he was he someone that you wanted? Um, at the time, I wasn't fully against it because, as you mentioned earlier on, he's got quite a good record in the championship. Um, I thought he'd do a good job for us uh, at the time. You know, we, we, we was a sort of average sort of club and I think that's what Steve Bruce is, an average manager. I thought he... He fitted the fitted the criteria quite well, but obviously it just didn't work out. But do you think that that maybe is, and do you think that maybe is the case that that's the ambition of the board right now that they are you know they're settling for mediocrity? I, I, I can't tell what the board's uh, uh, you know Gooch and Lai when he uh, appoint when he uh, he took over West Bromwich Albion the owner. We was, uh, you know, he brought us for a decent amount. Uh, we was a mid-table Prem club, a stable Prem club. Um, we hadn't, we hadn't fallen into the championship for a very long time. We was pushing uh, for a European spot most seasons. And, you know, look, if he was to sell the club now, he wouldn't even get half the amount that he brought the club for. And I, I can't, I wouldn't say he's settling for medi- mediocrity, but I, I can't. I, for him to sell the club, I think we need to be in the Premier League, and I think he keeps keeps trying to push it a bit too much. And it's it, you've got to trust the process, stick with a young manager, and you know it's going to take time for us to rebuild. Well, I mean, you said that about your manager. Could that be the case that you know maybe the problems could go as far as maybe Darren Moore's days? Well, uh, I think a lot of West Brom's problems have been through a lot of bad decisions at the club. Uh, some of the clowns that we've had as chief executive officers have made some very poor decisions when it comes to recruitment. Uh, you know, you look at the appointments of uh, Alan Pardew, Steve Bruce, the sackings of Slavin Bilic and Darren Moore. Uh, some of the signings, you know, the, the amount of money we've spent on players like Kenneth Sahor, Ollie Burke, 
uh, Carlin Grant, you could even say. There's been a, a lot of very poor decisions higher up in the club. Yeah, and I think I would agree with that. I think when, as an outsider for me, you know, like I said, when we when we got Darren Moore, you know, I was very, very excited. You know, he'd come from West Brom. Like, he, you know, he almost kept West Brom up when you think about it in the Premier League. He was, yeah. he was a couple of games away, wasn't he, from, from keeping them up. But it was one of those where I think he was so competitive that season where, Either side, you know, it was going to be one of those where you'd have to you, you were relying on the teams, weren't you, from to, to stay in the league? But yeah, you know, when we got Darren Moore, I thought it was a great appointment. All right, the football that he played wasn't the best, but he got results, you know. And certainly at the time, we were fighting in League One, um, you know, we were fighting for really for, for playoff football. And of course, he goes Chef Wednesday, and you know, my feelings for, for him doing the, doing the dirty over us, but you know, that that's <laughs> we're not talking about that. But it's one of those, mate, because I think, you know, Slavin Bilic was okay. Again, you know, probably didn't play the best football. You you may you may disagree with me with that. But... I, actually, I thought the uh, Bilic ball was very entertaining to watch, actually. Um, uh, he's probably my favourite ever manager. The, uh, entertained every time I went to the Hawthorns during his uh, time. Yeah, again, like I, was, I, only saw, I only saw little bits of West Brom. Like I say, you, you go day and day out to watch West Brom. And, I said there were a few games where I thought at the time where I just thought that because I know the way that you know the way he ended at West Ham it wasn't that great you know again some of the football he played at West Ham was a little bit dull um, but I like to say you know there were some great performances he had last season but I think more of the people that remember Billich was him just kind of tiptoeing over the line you know he kind of almost gave that advantage away wasn't he in that championship race. Yeah, uh, we, we just didn't recover from the, the break with COVID, really. Uh, us and Leeds were very dominant in the league before the COVID break, and then they continued to be dominant in the league, and we just didn't come back to the same team, really. But luckily, we did enough in the first part of the season just to get us over the, over the line. You did, and to be fair, you know, it was, like I say, it was good, like I say, West Brom, you know, the well-supported club, you know, I've got a lot of respect for them, I do, you know, the times I've been there, you know, they've, they've always generated a good atmosphere when I've, when I've been to, I think the last game I did was 20, goodness me, when was the last time, when was the last game we got? Norwich, was it? Norwich, yeah, well, yeah. remember, 29, it was the first game post <laughs> Ashley Barnes, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was one of those um, Harvey Barnes. That was it. I was thinking, why am I saying Ashley Barnes then? Yeah, too many Barnes, mate. Too many Barnes. But looking at your form, guide, mate, and it does read quite worrying. You know, it's one of the you know the last win, Reading. You know, a two 0 win. Of course, that was post. You know, the first game post Bruce, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, I think it was always going to be that bounce, wasn't it? But um, to be fair, when you look at that, you think great win, Reading at the time that you know they were flying in the league, but. Last two performances, Bristol City, you know, defeat, Millwall defeat yesterday. What's what's why has it not been kicked on then? Uh well, I don't think Richard Beale really knows uh well I think any manager at the moment will be able to find the right starting eleven or the right formation or the right style of football to play over the Albion as we're so inconsistent. You never know what West Brom's gonna turn up. Um you looked we was very poor. Well, we was very good against Reading. Kept the same team against Bristol City. Awful performance. Didn't even compete. Made changes uh, on Saturday against Mill, which you know has got to happen uh, when you when you don't compete in a game, and they didn't pay off either. I just don't think Bruce Bruce can f- figure out his best starting eleven. I just don't, I, I don't think they know. What start? We we haven't got a identified style of football, and I, I just don't. I, I don't think they know what the right starting eleven is. Do you think that could be a case? You know, with Beal that he's a little bit too experienced for the job and the task that he's got ahead. Uh, potentially, yeah. Um, it could be that. Uh, some of his decisions have been questionable, but as I say, he's a he's more of a coach than a manager. Uh, but yeah, probably probably down to a bit of an experience. Because you look at um, well, you look at that result. Yeah, yes, uh, yesterday against Millwall, and you, know, you took the lead early. You just go into that twenty minutes, and then you know they equalise. You know, seven minutes before our time, and of course they get a late winner as well. And again, it's and you go down. You know, you're losing Cal Bartley as well. You know, it's one of those where again it's very poor from an experienced player to you know to get sent off. Yeah, you know, where he should be, he should be leading from the front, but. 
again, it's one of those where you know they lead, yeah, you know, they score late on, and against another defeat, and you're thinking to yourself, is there any light at the end of the tunnel for West Brom at the moment? Yeah, well, I think we've been a bit unlucky at times this season. Uh, you look at Norwich, uh, Norwich away, we got hard done by by refereeing decisions. Uh, you know, we, we could uh, you could argue that we did more than enough to beat the likes of Watford and Burnley live on Sky Sports earlier on in the season. Um, yesterday, you know, another late goal. But at the end of the day, you get what you deserve uh, in the league. It's a results business and we haven't been getting good enough results you know a team that was one of the favourites to go up at the start of the season really shouldn't be sitting second from bottom in the league well I see and you, I mean I'm looking at your fixtures coming up Sheffield at home Blackpool at home QPR away Stoke at home and then Sunderland away yeah tough isn't it well you, you, you've got to that Stoke game and that Blackpool game are must wins we, we've got to pick up three points. And to be honest, if we can't pick up three points against, I believe they're both home games, aren't they? They we are can't both beat home games, Stoke, yes. we can't beat, If we can't beat Stoke and Blackpool at home, I'm starting to lose a bit of hope, to be honest. Well, like I say, you know, you're playing most of the top, I mean, you play two of the top three, you know, Sheffield are up there, you know, they're, they're, they're competing very well, you know, QPR, of course, top of the league, you know, they're, of course, you know, keeping their manager, of course, he's turning down, turned down West, uh, turned down Wolves, uh, which is a good for them. And of course, Sunderland, which again, you should look at that and think, you know, Sunderland not really pulling much. I know it's their first, first season back in, back in the championship for them, but sure, you got to look at that and think we could get something from Sunderland. Yeah, I mean, Sunderland away on a Monday night, you know, there's not going to be many Albion fans travel all the way up. Uh, with the current form on a Monday night, it's a difficult place to go. I, I would take a point now, to be honest. I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you at all. I mean, it's it's funny because I don't think, you know, there's no real kind of, when you're down at the bottom and you look, at, I'm looking at the table now, and it's one of those where you have 14 points, you know, all right, you're only, you're only three points off safety. But I think the times when I've watched your videos and the times where the fans have reacted to how, as you've, you know, you've been quite, you know, you've been very, very vocal sort of very recently on the performances. You've had to bite your tongue, haven't you, Reese? before that, that, you know, when things aren't going your way, you've been having to kind of, like say, bite your tongue and go, all right, next game, we can do better. Yeah, I mean, last season, I was, you know, there, there was teams doing worse in the league. Uh, I was trying to keep the positivity because, you know, we last season it was very inconsistent uh, we'd go out one week you know the likes of when we beat Fulham and Bournemouth and play them off the park play really well really good performances and on the other hand there's some very dire and toxic evenings at the Hawthorns uh, Swansea and Preston games stand out to me uh, but I was trying to keep positivity um, you know there's teams down there like Derby and uh, Bristol City Blues Reading who are having worse times and I thought you know what it could be worse keep the positivity but this season, there's nothing to be positive about. I haven't seen us win all season, which is, uh, well, true games I've been to, which is very frustrating. And there's very, it's very hard to pick any positives out of the performances at the moment. We just, yeah, as I say, we're not really competing. Because you look at it and go, you, you've won two games this season, you've drawn eight. You know, you've got the worst home, you've got the worst win record right now in the league. Yeah, Huddersfield, who are bottom of the league, have won three games. It's, it's, I know it's mad, isn't it? You think, well, you've drawn, well, you've drawn the most out of the, the bottom five. And you've got to think, yeah, like, again, that was like me with Rovers last season. There was just no light at the end of the tunnel. You know, we ended up going down. I mean, I know we're in October, but could the unthinkable happen? West Brom going down to League One. Uh, well, I keep trying to convince myself a new manager is going to come in and we're going to start to win a few games and just get out of it. But the more and more I watch them, the more and more I think, you know, it probably could happen. They make the wrong... De- this is this managerial decision, whoever comes in, this is going to be West Brom's biggest decision in decades. If they, if they get this wrong, this could cost the club millions, millions. We, we could be in some big trouble if we go down to League One. And, 
you know, when you're down in the League One, the Premier League seems a very, very long way away. It does. And well, I'm just, I've got up the, the odds for the next manager. You know, it seems to be that it's going to be Carl, Carlos Cobran. Uh, he's he's our right favour, and then of course you know Carver Hall is the next one down. I mean any I mean those two managers are you know again got good records. You know you know Cobran almost took Huddersfield to the Premier League last season, but I think you're right. I think there's pro- I don't re- I don't think many of the managers realise how much of a bigger task this is on on their hands. Yeah, um, well I, I say I don't know much about. Uh... Carlos Coburn, is it uh, the Huddersfield manager? Yeah, Bielsa's number two. He was. Yeah, uh, obviously did well at Huddersfield last season. Uh, Bielsa's number two. Seems a, a fair, fair enough coach. Uh, he seems to have done decent jobs. Um, that Carvajal seems a bit of a journeyman to me. He's managed a lot of clubs. Uh, I think he did all right with Sheffield Wednesday and Swansea in England. I don't know. Much about him. Well, he took but, he took Wednesday. He took Wednesday almost at Premier League. He got beat by, ironically, Steve Bruce's Hull in the final, <laughs> which is kind of ironic, really. But yeah, I know he, I know he, he couldn't keep Swansea up. But you know, he's not a bad. You know, he's again Wednesday fans. You know, they'll 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 probably hate me in the comments here. But I I didn't think the football that they they played under uh, Carvajal wasn't that bad. You know, it was very much. You know, he had some good players. He had you know, he had Gary Hooper. He had Stephen Fletcher. He had. Um, yeah, Barry Bannon as well in the championship, who was, you know, of course, you know, we've seen right now in League One, he's, he's doing well under Darren Moore. So, you know, he's not a bad manager, but I think, like you say, it's, it, you're right. I don't, again, not, not many too, you know, not too, not many people know too much about Corbran, but, you know, the football I'd seen him play last season under Huddersfield was, was good, very high intensity, you know, high pressing football, a bit like Bielsa, really. So, obviously, yeah. you can see where Bielsa gets it his gives stuff me like. a... It gives me very much uh, Valerian Ishmael vibes. Uh, mm. and obviously, that didn't work out. He uh, had an excellent season with Barnsley, as I say. Played high-tempo football. But the thing is, for me, these players don't seem to react. No, no matter what manager comes in, they don't seem to play for them. They've seen off, you know, they've seen off Big Sam. They've seen off Slavs. They've seen off Valerian Ishmael. They've seen off Steve Bruce now. And a lot of them haven't been able to get a reaction out of them and I just you know the ideal replacement for me would have been Sean Dyche I, that's not going to happen now um, but whoever comes in needs to be strong and needs to sort them out and um, they'll obviously get the break um, when the World Cup's on and I think they need to treat that a bit like a a bit like a pre-season and sort out and organise them for figure out what the best starting eleven is and rebuild hopefully keep us up yeah, because I, I, you're right. I think the World Cup, you know, the break will probably come at a good time for a lot of clubs. I think West Brom included. I think you know, again, it's one of those where you know, the, the, so, you know, Ishmael. I was my seat. You know, when when he came to West Brom, I thought it was a great appointment for you because I thought, right, well, so did I. Yeah, yeah. And I I was one of those. I was a big puller because I thought he was he was a guy that I thought deserved a a, a good job. You know, given that you've just mentioned there with Barnsley and how well he did there, probably. Overachieved with that Barnsley squad, um, getting him into the playoffs, and all right, they got beat by Swansea, who went on to get to the final. But it was it was a great opportunity for for someone like Ishmael to come to West Brom, add something a bit different to what they've had before. All right, it's not worked out, but that high intensity football we've seen it. What Klopp's done, you know, with Liverpool and how he's transformed with that. Surely, for someone like West Brom, you know, a change something that changes style of football should be welcome, but. You're right. It's not. It's not worked out, is it? No. And another thing that uh, worries me a bit with the high intensity football is that I simply don't think uh, some of our players are fit enough to play it. You know, you look at the, the huffing and puffing uh, players like Jake Livermore, Matt Phillips. You know that, that there was tiring apparently on Saturday against Millwall. Um, yeah, they just don't look fit enough to me. But surely, is it time for them to maybe move on from the club? Maybe they've maybe they've done enough they maybe done too much for the club now and maybe it's time for for some of them those faces to kind of move on from the club yeah there's a lot of uh a harsh word to say but deadwood at the club uh you know players like matt phillips kyle bartley uh jake livermore they've been good servants to west brom uh in their day those good players but i think they've stayed at the club two three years too long 
uh, they they probably would have left good players, uh, you know, uh, good memories at West Brom and Albion fans have a lot of respect for them. But, you know, some of the, the performances in recent years haven't been good enough. Uh, I do like Jake Livermore as a captain. I think he's a proper professional. But as I say, I think it's probably time for him to move on. And for you, I don't think there's there's no quick fixes there right now for West Brom. You know, is it is it more there's going to be more of a, you know, it's going to get worse before it gets better for you? Oh, yeah. yeah. And as I say, going back to the owners, uh, I think they have a vision that, you know, they're trying to rush it, to rush to fix it. But I think we've just got to trust the process. We've got to pick the right manager, but also stick with him as well. Uh, we had some in, we had something good going with Darren Moore and Slavin Village, but as soon as things started, started to get a bit rough, they had them gone. Uh, if we're going to get this Cobrain, uh, as long as he's the right fit and, you, you know, you can see the direction we're going in, you can see he's got a project and a plan. Uh, you, you've got to back him and stick with him. Uh, it's going to, it's not going to, he's not, it's not going to work mir- miracles. It's not going to happen overnight. Main thing is this season, keeping us in the league. It's going to be massive for you, and I'm going to end this on a good note for you. Your plans then. So, who do you want as manager? In terms of your transfer policy, what what would you like to see in January? And really, for going for the rest of the season, then for for West Brom, what would what do you want from this football club towards the end of the season? Uh, in terms of the manager. Uh, I'd probably go for this Carlos Cobrain. Uh, as I say, Sean Dyche would have been the one I would have wanted, but I think that they've spoke to him and talks have broke down. I don't think he really fancies it. Uh, as I say, he's the young manager, this Carlos. Um, stick with him, trust the process. In January, I don't think many, we, I don't think we're going to move on too many players. Um, I'd love, we, we need a centre forward in. Uh, Daryl DK might be back from injury uh, after the World Cup, but he's very injury prone. Uh, he's played two or three appearances for the Albion. Uh, when he comes back after the World Cup, it'll probably be his third appearance under his third different manager, which is quite a crazy stat. But we desperately need a goalkeeper in. Uh, David Button wasn't good enough. Uh, clearly showed that uh, in the first few opening games. Got replaced by uh, one of Albion's own, Alex Palmer. He's also looked a bit shaky in recent games. He's probably the better option, but he's not a first-choice championship goalkeeper. So I think we definitely need to get a goalkeeper in, even if it's only on a short contract in January and a centre-forward. Um, for the rest of the season, I can't believe I'm saying this because at the start of the season, playoffs was minimum. Um after last season finishing 10th, which shows how consistent West Brom have been in recent years. The fact that that was our worst ever position in over 20 years, finishing 10th last year. As a state, at the start of the season, it would have been playoffs minimum. At the moment, I would like to think we could get mid-table, but as long as we don't go down, I think I'll be semi-satisfied. But yeah, hopefully we can we can have a few good results, a few good days with the Albion and look at it again in the summer and hopefully have a better season next season. I think that's a good way to finish on. Will, you've been brilliant. Uh, hopefully we'll we'll do this again very soon. Um, yeah, make sure you smash a like, make sure you subscribe and of course, go and follow, go subscribe to Will. He does brilliant stuff with Midlands football and everything else and hopefully me and him will collab again very, very soon. Fingers crossed, yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me on, Joe. Very welcome.